This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Um, by the time you know we have other participants joining, we let's do a quick uh, introduction from uh, all of us. I'll start with myself. Um, I'm Rohan. I'm uh, working as an EWM lead. I've worked in several implementation projects and led several implementation projects uh, for uh, SAP EWM. I'm, I have worked in EWM right from 7 version since 2011 to uh, the latest 1809 version. I think uh, this course will be in 1909, but my last project was in 1809. So I have uh, extensively worked on EWM. I've worked on rollouts, uh, upgrade, and several other types of projects. Overall, I have 15 years of experience. Uh, prior to SAP AWM, I was working as SAP MMWM consultant. I'm uh, also SAP certified into MMWM and EWM modules. Okay. Uh, I have been um, train. I'm training uh, EWM for more than five years now. I have completed around thirty plus batches with SAP EWM, both online as well as corporate training. So um, can we have a brief uh, introduction from each one of you, your exposure to SAP and what you're looking with this, from this course? Yeah, uh, I am Dinesh. Um, uh, okay. I have almost a lot of, yeah. Uh, 13 years experience in the MM and WM um, model. I did that uh, uh, implementation project as well as that rollout and upgrade project. Um, so I am I'm looking to to assume my career in that uh, EWM. So that is my experience. That's great. Yeah. So you are already into MMWM and you are looking forward to uh, moving, upgrading yourself to the latest version and solution. That's good. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, Manu, Saurabh, Shiva, Krishna? Yeah, Rahul. Good morning. Good morning, all. This is Manu. Uh, yeah, I have experience in SAP MM for around five years. So I wanted to continue my career in SAP with EWM. So I'm willing to join this course. Okay, that's good. That's good. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hello. Good morning, all. I am Shiva. Mm -hmm. I had my graduation in 2018 only. I just learned MM at uh, sorry six months back. Now I am upgraded to EWM. I don't have past experience in MM, but uh, 
i'm interested in awm because uh, uh, it's uh, many of many of my friends said that uh, it's advanced technology advanced for uh, sap mm that's why I, i'm willing to yeah, yeah it's a new module new technology and uh, that's good uh, thanks Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi. Hi. Yeah, this is Krishna, and uh, uh, I'm working uh, as a, a senior web developer. I've been having been around for ten years in SAP. So uh, I just wanted to learn the EWM and uh, be work as a fast functional, uh, uh, techno functional. Techno functional. Okay. Okay. That's good, Krishna. Thanks. How about you, Saurav? Hello, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, I am Saurav uh, from Bihar. Actually, I am just listening listening for EM, EBMW. I don't know EBMW. Have you worked in SAP before? No. Okay. No problem. Uh, thank you. First time we. First time we don't have background now. All right. Yeah. So. Right. So we have a good um, turn around, right? From you know experts in MMWM to uh, experts in ABAB and few of you who are starting your career and uh, at your initial stage and moving to EWM. So before I go oh. ahead and explain you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's thanks. Thanks. So, uh, okay. so, so uh, before, I, before I go ahead and explain you what this course is all about and uh, what is Theros management, extended Theros management. Um, Important point to note here that uh, you know for this course it is it's not mandatory to know a uh, uh, WM. So prior to EWM, there was uh, warehouse management module. So it is not mandatory to know about warehouse management. Even if you don't, even if you haven't worked in WM, that is fine because EWM is very different to WM. And even though you have learned WM, you still have to learn it from scratch. There are very few functionalities which are common between MM and EWM, uh, WM and EWM. Uh, so uh, the other thing is uh, uh, there is only one prerequisite for this course. We assume that uh, you know, or we expect that the the, uh, the student should have background of inventory management of SAP. So either you know like for uh, you if you have worked in ABAP 10 years that is fine you might have worked into several uh, mmwm objects the uh, inventory management objects uh, if somebody who is new into mm might ha has already learned mm he knows about inventory management the basics you know we don't you need you to be expert in inventory management things like what is good receipt goods issue basic flow uh, when the products are received and issued in a plant, those things you should be aware of. So, sort of maybe you will have to catch up on these things since you are uh, new to SAP before you plan no, to do SAP EWM. Okay. So, oh. only prerequisite for this course is yeah. um, that what? you should have. I'm saying the only prerequisite of this course is. You should have uh, understanding of inventory management of MM, inventory management part of MM. You should be knowing what is good receipt, good issue, transfer posting, just high level basics. Okay. So uh, we'll continue our session. Uh, so this session, um, we will be taking you through three topics. First, we'll give you. Uh, an overview on what is SAP EWM, then the course content, how this course is going to be conducted, and uh, finally we will uh, run through the uh, you know course content, different topics, how how they are done, and 
you know the, how we are going to cover these different topics in our sessions okay. so uh, before i start just a request uh, if you're not speaking please keep your call on mute you know for uh, the uh, clarity of sound yeah thank you okay so since you all are here you might have already read or got some details on what is where awm or what is a warehouse management uh, software uh, awm basically is a it's a software provide recipe for their warehouses so warehouses you can see this is similar to this you know you have products stored on pallets all over the place in the warehouse racks so how do you manage the stock in a location a warehouse where you actually store them so previously warehouse was just to manage the stock at bin level now with uh, like i said as we understood this is a new module advanced module it has apart from just storing the stock it does uh, you know helps us in planning organizing reducing the inventory and managing the stock there are concepts like labor management where it is going to help us manage the stock optimize uh, the warehouse functionality so that the same thing you know putting the stock removing the stock we are able to do in an efficient manner so handling the material movements is um, warehouse management solution is going to help us so it's it's very easy to just place the stock remove the stock but now with the new modern warehouses the space are limited there are a lot of a lot of automated systems now in a warehouse where this wm solution whichever is a wm solution warehouse management system or software should be able to communicate with those uh, systems should be able to uh, guide or should be able to automatically take decisions for optimizing the movements that are done in the warehouse plus business should be flexible enough to adapt or probably the warehouse management solution should also be flexible enough to adapt to these uh, you know uh, each different business requirements when businesses have to adapt to the new techniques or new ways of storing and retrieving products from a warehouse okay there are ewm or any warehouse management solution is a is a is an integrated solution it's not an independent uh, module it uh, you know it integrates with sap mm where it is fetching products from the uh, vendors and storing them in the warehouse it is integrated with sd where it is picking the finished products and dispatching to the customers it is integrated with quality management the stocks at bin level can be inspected it is uh, integrated with uh, production where you know it is supplying parts to production and receiving the finished goods from production so it's not a independent module though uh, it, uh, our warehouse management solution can be other than sap also you know like we can work with uh, all sap modules and a uh, warehouse management solution can be you know non sap as well so prior to ewm there was an area like bigger complex warehouses where apart from just storing and you know managing the stock at bin level there were other requirements other these major new functionalities which i talked about you know how the warehouses have changed these were the requirements from the warehouses so sap uh, came up with ewm with you know to cater those kind of bigger complex warehouses so the objectives that the objectives that sap had was to provide a better customer service give more and more standard processes in the system for warehousing for the business to choose make the system very flexible so uh, if you are from uh, one of us is, uh, three of us are from a bad background we know there is something called as object oriented program which programming which gives us the option to have dynamic variables then we can we can be very flexible in, in delivering whatever client requirements are okay so less uh, less uh, complex enhancements are required to increase the efficiency and productivity of the warehouse so there are going to be features which is going to help the business in achieving that reduce the inventory as i said you know uh, modern warehouses are getting smaller and smaller and uh, the movements are becoming more and more more and more documents are generated so these warehouses they don't work on desktops they work on scan guns 
and uh, the new scan guns and uh, automated touch screen scan guns are now there and uh, there are tablets and different kinds of devices that we are going to use on the go while executing the transactions so visibility and decision support there are a lot of kpis and a lot of uh, tools available in s4hana now which will help us to in achieve greater visibility and help us in support uh, making the decisions as i said uh, automation and scalability is there flexibility and space utilization this is all related to the warehouse being more efficient in delivering the customer requirements so in terms of uh, ewm we have been uh, seeing ewm right from uh, you know 2006 okay but i would say ewm was major version was somewhere in 2011 12 where the nine version came of ewm so sap uh, why sap came up with ewm so the idea was uh, so sap ewm has been in sap road map since long and it is still there we are now currently moving towards s4 hana and ewm is one of the few modules which are adapted as they are you know because they are recently developed they are they, their um, architecture is good enough for a long term road map of sap where you know uh, they are looking forward to integrate with it you know, and uh, use it in their business suit of s4 hana so i will be also talking about s4 hana in this course because our ewm code uh, uh, our ewm um, topics that we'll be discussing we'll be discussing in s4 hana 1909 so we are going to cover ewm in s4 hana system so let me go back to the ewm system so i was explaining you you know there has been a lot of versions from sap 9 was the best version since then sap uh, i mean until s4 hana sap was in uh, sap was um, using ewm in the scm system so we had erp system where ecc system we had mmpp sdqm module and we had ewm system which was a stand alone or it was implemented along with apo and the scm system okay so such so now as of now basically we have these many six deployment options so we still can use with we can st still use ewm in a separate instance why separate instance this separate block means these are separate sap system itself so why you know you are seeing everywhere ewm uh, separate instance separate instance that means ewm is decentralized so what is decentralized why sap is at several places making ewm in a separate instance or why it was initially developed and it is still for some business processes it is still required as to be a decentralized there are two reasons for um, making it decentralized number 1 your warehouses they require faster response from server okay so they are they have we have a separate server and the sizing is done based on how much warehousing processes or how much documents are created in warehouses so ewm has its own server better response from server is required why because we use as i told you we use scan guns so we use like mobile devices like we have a mobile and we execute transactions on in the warehouses warehouses don't have desktops they do the transactions while on the go while they are moving and they are moving the product and they have their scan gun in their pocket and they just open scan scan who the tell the system what movement they have done and then they move on to their forklift and their whatever device they are using uh, equipment they are using and they start executing other movements okay so they use these kind of devices where they need a faster response from server there is something called a stack time from server that has to be fast so you know if such as if, uh, for example if my my country my um, plant is based out of us and i have a warehouse in netherlands so i cannot share the same server because you know if if they are using the same server of netherlands they will be 
for mm sd other modules we can still use but in case of warehouse management the response will be very slow okay so uh, that's why you know uh, we used to have a separate instance we still have in s4 hana uh, if we are using on premise we can we still use this centralized ewm so it's there uh, and uh, what we used to have is one ewm system could talk to several erp system so sap has made ewm you know not only for integrating with sap but it is also marketing ewm as a standalone warehousing system so you know you might have seen there are some companies that are only into warehousing you know they don't manufacture but they have huge warehouses or distribution channels everywhere distribution uh, you know storage areas everywhere so they store products for more than one customer for example i have a distribution center in india i store products for amazon also flipkart also snapdeal also so you know such kind of warehouses can also go with ewm so ewm is not necessarily it will be using for the same plant so such kind of integration has been provided in standard possible integration is also provided in standard ewm so ewm let's say when we will be studying we will be studying about uh, ewm for a, a warehouse for a plant and the same concepts can be rolled over to a warehouse for multiple plants or multiple distribution centers so we can have you know one ewm talking to several erp or even one erp can talk to several ewm systems so this is i'm talking about this is was the old way where ecc used to talk to ewm and scm system okay with s4 hana since uh, 1709 we have the embedded ewm where in the same erp business source ewm has been introduced okay so before 1709 we used to have s4 hana i mean if it is still possible we can use s4 hana talk to old ewm for example you have you have moved into s4 hana but you haven't moved your ewm into s4 hana you can also communicate to one or more s4 hana erp systems or your s4 hana system can also communicate to one or more scm ewm system i mean the system which is in a uh, sap system which is decentralized in a separate instance okay so uh, these kind of possible deployment options are there depending on the company that you work on so we are going to focus on the embedded version and why embedded version in 1909 there are two reasons one this this is the most this is going to be the most uh, important uh, deployment option that is going to be used in future because sap is going to stop support of wm okay wm is going to go out it's going to be phased out by 25 2025 and all wm people have to move to ewm where there will be a lot of projects coming in so one of the drawback of or one of the important uh, you know um important thing that was missing until the until s4 hana was you know ease of using sap ewm in ecc itself in erp system i mean we don't i'm a small customer medium customer i don't want to use a separate instance i want to use like wm i want to use it in one system okay, Rogan, so, i have a question yes tell me Vinesh. yeah uh, you mean that uh, uh sap wm uh, standard two or two system right you mean that uh, uh client or what, what do you mean there actually in s4 under that uh, sap ewm standalone you mentioned the two right two uh, yes two means uh these are two systems you know for example in yeah. one erp you have one plant <coughs> and they have one warehouse in uh, maybe in chicago another warehouse in you know in new york somewhere oh, in Oscar, okay. somewhere. so okay, both okay. are using separate systems because we have created separate because they have bigger mm. warehouses they have their own servers okay 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 uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, Ro Rohan, uh, this is yeah. Manu. Uh, yeah. See, uh, if my client will use SAP standalone, and uh, but if I learn SAP embedded HANA, how it going to help for me? So both are same or how it differs? 
see business process wise they are huh. same okay like when you see into embedded it is nothing but the whole config nodes and whole uh, easy access node is moved to uh, the s4 hana system the only difference is there are few changes in master data and there are some changes in how the integration is done between each all sap modules and ewm so integration is changing few master data is changing it is very simplified in s4 hana so why we are learning s4 hana because we will we are we want to learn something which is going to be you know skill which we are going to use it in most of our future projects we will also cover the delta part what additional things are there in decentralized like there is something called as core interface and when i am integrating there are five steps additional to be done in decentralized era we will be covering those as well so that you can also pick up uh, the uh, work on uh, standalone ewm as well okay okay thank you so coming back to uh, the 1909 um, so now we we see lot of you know sap's focus has been in s4 hana so we see lot of uh, you know changes being done here in uh, the nine in the s4 hana system many new i mean the, the s4 hana the whole process the whole uh, idea is to simplify the process and uh, there are new theories which are created new ui which are also you know provided in ewm so it's better to also execute the process through this new ui new transactions or new process standard processes that fsap has provided us in s4 hana so that is why we are going to focus on 1909 and we will also catch up on the decentralized few delta parts but if we, but we have to implement we while learning this ewm we will be implementing a fresh new warehouse we, i mean we'll do it as a case study uh, we will implement all the processes so we are going to do that for 1909 system okay. so uh, so in final possibility would be you know if you we can so finally i would say in sap erp in s4 hana it can talk to all kinds of ewm either standalone in s4 hana and the standalone in scm or it can in the same sap system can also talk to s4 hana ewm decentralized or s4 hana ewm embedded so all types of connections are now possible with the latest release in 1909 this was this slowly came up first uh, you know this communication came up in 7 then this came up in 1709 and now uh, in 1809 all possible communication Uh, connections are possible ewm was still in standalone now ewm also decentralized can be part of s4 hana so just one you know question uh, which might have come up in your mind when we talk about why sap did not change you know wm say if something new is coming in mm sap changes mm right brings up new technologies or nsd in pp why did not change wm because uh, because you know wm infrastructure was uh, you know made in 92 but the warehouse warehouse management took a very big change in the early 2000 and the existing transfer order framework if it had to be changed it would have been a major change okay so sap said that we will not touch because this is impact the existing customers and plus many new functionalities which they wanted to bring you know uh, the existing transfer order or wm would wm processes will be impacted and they may get restrictions at several places so it was more better to start from scratch so that is why sap brought a new module totally from scratch with new programming and new framework new architecture so the whole idea was ewm was not to you know not to just store the stock in a bin but also help you in controlling the process which forklift can enter which place which resources allowed where if i am going in a warehouse just imagine some of the basic things you know i am going in a warehouse to place a stock while coming back i should not be empty handed 
I should have I should system should propose me to pick another item. Okay, uh, if I'm moving in a warehouse, I should go in uh, you know in a direction of the aisle uh, which I'm moving uh, in the lane which I'm going. I should you know I should give I should get the uh, system requirement to take material pick material in the direction i am going you know so if i am going from north to south i should get the bins which are now north, north into going towards south not randomly i should not be given bins randomly right for picking so that my direction of movement my route is taken care of and based on that i have been i'll be proposed to work so work assignment all is done by system okay and we can through configuration through master data we can Control them based on how a layout of the of the warehouse is. So it's very important to uh, understand what a warehouse layout is. So that is why for our training we we what we do is uh, we will do uh, we will teach you as a case study warehouse. Okay, so basically what we are going to do is we are going to take a warehouse and implement it from scratch. Uh, we are going to take a case study of a pump manufacturing company and we are going to build a layout from scratch and all material flow all restrictions all constraint working with all types of resources we have designed for a particular warehouse this is based on our experience with the implementations that we have done and we also have a bill of material a material raw material finish semi finished goods and we are going to use them in a warehouse to get them from our vendors we will store them into the storage areas and then from our storage areas we are going to supply them to production and then from production we are going to receive the finished products so we are going to, the flow would be like you know we get it from the doors we put it into the areas and then from here storage areas we supply them for production then from production we you know receive it into our storage area for the finished products that we make pump we are going to store them over here and oh sorry just imagine. so the finished products we are going to store them over here and then from here we are going to put issue the finished products to a customer so we are going to follow the whole process and each area is designed as a separate area that you, the kind of a storage that you will see in a warehouse somewhere you know there will be racks somewhere the products will be stacked on the floor one above the other somewhere there will be you loose pieces kept over and somewhere there will be pushback racks somewhere some places there will be packing areas somewhere there will be quality deconsolidation work centers so how this whole area is mapped we are going to cover in a case study warehouse while we are executing the processes okay and we are all all going to execute the processes using furies okay because we want you to adapt to s4 hana as well Excuse me, Ron. One question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the in the in the embedded is uh, EWM. Can we have access to SAP PP also? Yes. Yes. So basically, you know, all our uh, uh, basically all the uh, topics we have to in, to test the topics we have to create data in SAP PP for production, yes. SAP SD for sale orders. Yes. The PMM. So all you will have access to all the modules uh, in your test system. Okay, and also for EW, uh, WM, SAP WM. Yeah, if you want, but uh, okay. WM we won't be you know discussing in our session. You will be having. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is how you know uh, we will be uh, discussing the different concepts. So let us now talk about more about the different features that we have in SAP EWM so so basically you know the currently EWM 9.5 version is going on even we say S4 HANA 1909 in S4 HANA 1909 basically it is equivalent to a EWM decentralized 9.5 version so any so this 9.5 version is in S4 HANA now 
uh, in 1909. So if a new version comes 9.6, it will be 9.6 for decentralized and it will also be for similar equivalent version will be created in S4 HANA also. So functionality wise, you know, SAP has added all these functionalities. Um, important changes as compared to WM and EWMR, like, you know, in WMB, uh, the bins did not store information about the serial numbers, for example. You know, EWM stores all those information about, even about serial numbers, which serial numbers are in which bin. These are, you know, some of the basic things which were not uh, good in WM and people move to EWM or rather are moving. So there are, there were also, you know, concepts like uh, handling unit management we used to work with pallets. And when we used to work with pallets, then SAP EWM was not capable enough to manage all types of packing, repacking functionality and the pallets would, uh, you know, become inconsistent because of all different kinds of flows and SAP had to always correct them. So it was very inconsistent uh, working with material like uh, pa uh, packaging materials and pallets. So it is very, very stable, easy to implement, easy to pack, repack and work with handling units. So EWM is very stable and it is one of their core processes of working with handling units. So I, as I was explaining you, you know, why I say uh, 9.1 9 uh, 9 was a major version because prior to that SAP EWM was part of SCM. If you, some of you are uh, SAP since long, you might have heard about APO and the SCM box where you had APO, SNP, other modules. EWM was part of that. And then after 9, EWM was still part of SCM. But after 9, before 9, you know, SAP and uh, EWM and APO were implemented in the same system. After 9, SAP told EWM, now it's a full fledged warehouse. You have to implement it as a separate instance. Don't mix it with APO. So EWM became independent after 9 like um, um, SAP then you know gave us a major uh, major uh, changes in EWM where it brought up a functionality called as advanced production integration where uh, supplying to production receiving from production was simplified and lot more possibilities were provided to to be able to supply the products more efficiently to a production area. Then there were, you know, Fury apps. You can see Fury apps are built 9.4. SAP EWM, you know, you can understand uh, the focus of SAP into building EWM. Uh, the latest, uh, latest version, like 9.4, 9.5, EWM directly talks to a PLCs. You know, we don't even need a middleware. Like I can, so basically why we need to talk to PLCs because we are, we, are being, we are being used on the shop floor, we are being used on the warehouses where a lot of automated systems are there. So how, what is the system, what the automated, what is the, um, they use something called as PLC. PLC is the system using which, you know, they are sent signals and that that's how they are, um, that the whole process of, Managing the PLC is done through uh, managing the hardware automated system is done through PLCs. So PLC is like their IT of those, you know, automatic uh, robot arms or conveyor systems. So EWM can directly send signals to them. Okay, like, hey, this is my movement, just carry out. They do the movement and then they give us a signal back saying that this movement has been done in the system, uh, done physically, just do it in the system as well. So there is no need of any middleware. So SAP has MFS, material flow system, using which we directly communicate using PLCs. So there has been a lot of improvements and a lot of, uh, you know, stabilization on integration aspect as well to non-SAP systems uh, as well, even talking to another SAP system or even talking uh, from uh, SAP to SAP system. So in this decentralized system, you know, the integration, the major selling point has been when we use decentralized for EWM has been standard integration between both SAP systems. So you, if you, if you realize, you know, whenever the two systems talk to each other, there is a lot of maintenance required, data failing from another system to another system. All these are simplified monitoring, managing two systems is very easy. So that is why, you know, people uh, with uh, more bigger warehouses used to go with uh, other WM solutions for bigger warehouses. Now they are going to 
EWM. Okay. Uh, 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 Rogan, uh, yeah. Rogan, I have one question. Uh, EWM yes. is uh, uh, integrated with uh, directly with, uh, for example, directly with inventory or WM? EWM My is? Oh, it then, integrates with WM or IM. Or, or directly with the MM model. It directly integrates. So we assign EWM to a story location. It is linked. So it is either WM or EWM. Okay. So we don't use WM. We directly assign. Okay. Okay. WM is not required, right? So directly I can use that EWM. Yes, yes, you don't need WM. You can directly assign to a story so, uh, all the stock I, I manage in the bin in EWM, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. So, just to give you a few more in some insight of some of those features, the list is very big. I just choose to, uh, you know, list the only the important ones here. What functionalities are there in WM and EWM since not many, but few of us are from. Uh, where WM background, so you know things like just randomly pick five six important ones. Things like unloading loading. You know we manage truck trailers in a in a warehouse. We have to load the stock onto the truck and trailers and you know unload the stock. These simple things were missing. So old days when we used to work in WM, we had to do a lot of custom announcements. This is standard out of the box in EWM. Okay. Uh, validated service kits. There are products which are managed in, you know, in a packed form kits. Like for example, when you go, in a, especially in automobile industry, when you go and buy a brake, they don't give you just a brake. There is a brake assembly with five six items. That's a kit basically. So especially in terms of in spare parts companies, you know, they they have a lot of warehousing requirements, but they work with kits. They don't have pro managed one product, but a group of products. So for them, kitting solution was given out of the box. Cartonization planning, the, your shipments which you are dispatching. This used to prepare the size of a package for your truck or trailer, which is more efficient, you know, in terms of what how much weight it can carry, what are the routes, and how efficiently the whole packaging can be done. So this used to manage all the packaging relevant uh, activities for a truck or trailer. RF, you know, I was explaining you that we have RF transactions very, very flexible. You know, you can create your own transaction. Any transaction you have, you have a custom transaction, you can build it on RF. You can uh, build this. Uh, you can change your existing transactions without impacting any other processes. You can change screen, bring new fields. So during development, so most of warehousing projects, uh, you know, 80% of the projects in WM, we used to have announcements on RF side. So these are all simplified now and all the RF transactions are done. Uh, and all the RF changes, basically we had 80% of announcements on the RF side. So now with new warehouses also, we have those many announcements, but they are work as a functional, as a technical person. It is more easy to do these announcements and they are close to standard. So a lot of possibilities are there to work with RF and EWM. So this is where somebody from ABAB, you know, he's going to spend uh, somebody from a techno functional background. He's going to spend most of the time in building this RF screens and discussing with users. So you see a lot of job roles of EWM te technical functions. They help us in building this new RF infrastructure and all the uh, all the processes are done on rf so no no desktop you know no desktop transactions okay so labor management as i told you packing has been simplified uh, talk appointment scheduling you can book your appointments for the trucks and trailers uh, you know in s4 hana we have cds views whereas cockpit is also there so all these things are you know added you can work with exceptions Again, you know, if you are working in warehouse, there are exception situations. How you handle them, there are some standard techniques provided by SAP. So there are a few functionalities which are there in WM, but the way they are done in EWM is totally different. For example, handling with management, I was telling you, it is a lot more simplified. The strategies, new strategies, they are simplified and a lot more, you know, possibilities for you to configure as much as more than 50 plus strategies you can. 
uh, do it using configuration. Okay. So this these are some of the changes replenishment process. Obviously, these all processes are there in standard uh, EWM, uh, standard WM also, but the way they are done in EWM, it's totally different. So the whole process, the whole change, the whole reason for doing all these changes was to give us the flexibility so that we can, through configuration, we can activate or make changes as per the client requirements because the warehouses each warehouse is a different each layout of a warehouse will be different each warehouse will be doing the processes in a different manner so we should be able to without much enhancements or even if there are enhancements uh, the various connection points are given by sap so that we are able to execute or implement ewm in a flexible manner so, uh, so basically, EWM in S4 HANA, SAP has provided us two options. But is SAP EWM basic implementation and advanced implementation. So basic implementation is free for S4 HANA. Okay, if I am buying MMSGPP, I'm buying S4 HANA business suit, I'll get basic EWM free to use. That's why, that's because they are promoting EWM against WM. So if they say you're using WM rather than that, use WM, it is basic. Almost the, the features that are there in WM are given in basic EWM. Very, so all these major features are not there. Very few, you know, uh, like uh, receiving, put away, and uh, basic RF, all those things are given. Advanced features are not given in basic. And then for customers that are more into warehousing, SAP has given them, advanced EWM and for buying advanced EWM there is for using advanced EWM there is additional license required so I'll just take you through a typical inbound process in WM how it used to be executed how a basic process in EWM would be executed and how a advanced EWM process would be executed I'm just giving you a very uh, one example of one process so EWM was, uh, so now EWM, there are two ways, you know, in, in EWM embedded of this embedded in 92.9, when you go for a client and implementation, the first thing you're going to discuss or analyze is what are their processes and whether we can implement their process with basic EWM so that they don't have to get an additional license or else their processes are too complicated. They have to go with advanced EWM for that, you know, uh, we will add those additional functionalities by buying the license. So, for example, we let's talk about a process in WM. We used to do purchase order and we used to do the good receipt using Migo and good receipt document would get posted. So we used to get a purchase order sent to the vendor, the material is to arrive, we used to post good receipt and the good receipt would be posted in system, right? The stock would in the system would then increase in a bin. We used to create transfer orders and confirm transfer orders so that the product would then go into a final bin. Okay. So transfer order was a document created to track the movement of the product from the area where we have received to the actual location, the bin where we are going to store them. Same process, why I say, you know, even if you have WM units to store, still done EWM, because the same process is done in EWM in a different way. So we create a purchase order. Inbound delivery is mandatory. We need to create inbound delivery, which e delivery, which it comes to EWM. So we don't do Migo now. We do a receipt using VL31M. That inbound delivery will now be received in EWM. So why SAP is saying make Inbound delivery mandatory one because that's the standard way of sending data to EWM and SAP has realized that uh, most of the companies are using deliveries because their vendors are now in IT and they send us this message that they are dispatching the goods so those messages can be utilized to create delivery so that you know the operators or the uh, logistics users don't have to go and create deliveries manually so this has been a trend of uh, uh, most of the receiving or outbound process where we create deliveries. It is must to create deliveries with SAP EWM. So using that delivery, we are going to post good receipt in EWM using RF 
and then we are going to create a task confirm the task and put it into the warehouse bin so to has been replaced by task deliveries we do the gr put in the bin so only message that goes to erp is so all these things happen in ewm and as soon as the gr is done my good receipt status will be updated in ecc and accounting documents will be posted so only here is where is ewm will continuously send messages to other erp purchase orders deliveries and only a good receipt after that you see the stock in your store location everything else is managed in ewm in ewm you will see the stock in the monitor which bin has how much stock all those details you can get them in the warehouse then coming back to you know the inbound process same inbound process in a complicated way so i have just given you one very one uh, you know uh, scenario here for complex errors that we can have you know almost 10 15 variants for the same inbound receipt scenario okay with complex errors i'll just explain you how again this process is same we create purchase order we create asn or inbound delivery so when we create delivery now it's a bigger complex warehouse where we are also managing the truck and trailers so truck gets created okay uh, the truck gets created through some interface with third party or manually or you know the vendor sends us a truck number and we create a truck in the system we track uh, we track the truck by when the truck comes at the door okay we we log that information in the system we unload the stock from the truck there is a transaction to do unloading of stock and then after unloading we post a good receipt we check everything and then we post a good receipt on rf so you know you can see uh, new intermediate steps are added okay so the handling units we create handling units or we see the same handling units so handling unit is must in the complex bigger warehouses we receive handling units in the staging area after we receive them we don't directly put away the bin we will route it to a deconsolidation area I'm just, i've just given you an example of a deconsolidation area where i it's an area where i do repacking i may take it to a repacking area and then put it away into the final bin or i can take it to a quality area this inbound process can be done in several intermediate steps okay so i just the system automatically does that okay so based on the routes i create system is going to direct me to an area so let's say this is a deconsolidation area i create and confirm the task to the deconsolidation area i repack the product and once i have done my deconsolidation repack the product i'll say i have completed automatically system will create a task to move it to an id point a location which is near to the actual racks where i'm storing where you know the people uh, the person who is responsible for storing the rack is going to identify a suitable bin and then he's going to move it to the final bin so he's going to after movement he's going to confirm it and the handling units are going to be placed into the final bin so you know this is how a typical uh, complex cwm process can be done in terms of receiving i've told you this is just one variant we can do validated service also we can prepare kits also uh, we can do uh, an rf transactions we can uh, you know create handling units as i said you know you can uh, repack the products on rf everything you know you can do inspection and uh, all kind of activities can be done depending on how the flow is carried out physically in the warehouse so you need to understand uh, basically what your warehouse is how the flows are executed and then map and execute your processes in the warehouse okay so this is uh, this is what i wanted to discuss you about the basic of sap ewm we'll be now taking you through the course content how the course is conducted and if time permits we'll go through a you know a system run as well so any questions on the uh, sap ewm as a module from anyone no questions rowing rowing okay okay all right then um if we are clear i'll explain you so 
how this course is conducted. So basically, this course we have uh, divided into eleven units. Okay. Uh, Aron, one so, question: uh, is okay. is the process uh, is same in S uh, SAP SCM server, or the process is different in the process is the same. Server and the processes are going to be same. Only thing yeah. is, you know, there are less documents there. Theory yeah. is there in so there are the delta are, are you know in S4 Anna we have theories, we have new KPI and new uh, analytical transactions in uh, S4 HANA. Uh, okay. In decentralized, we have SIF for interface, and the way the warehouses are integrated is different in decentralized as well as S4 HANA. So we will be covering those delta parts wherever we whenever we go through those processes. Okay. So as I've told you, you know, this course is basically, you know, close to how we would implement, uh, practically implement our uh, AWM warehouses. Okay. Just give me one minute. So, so how we will be executing the uh, in a physical in a project when we go for an EW implementation because most of the work you will find in implementation. So, by that is the better way to understand the process. So, we'll first set up the op structure, do the integration of a new warehouse. We'll create everything from scratch. We'll not we'll not uh, you know configure anything uh, before the session. Everything we'll do it together. The whole storage type, all of this new warehouse we'll create uh, together. The master data will create. We have bill of material, all the master data, templates, stock templates, everything is ready. We'll create. We'll set up the RF. I'll explain you how to set up RF in an implementation project right from scratch. Uh, and what are the reporting tools? And then finally, we'll start executing the process. So, first, we'll execute the process in a basic way, understand the concepts, uh, new concepts like availability groups, the strategies, the how to call it, integrate with quality, slotting rearrangement. And then similar processes will execute on the outbound side. They understand the strategies, basic integration, wave management, how the exception processes are done, how batch management is handled in EWM, and also how to integrate, how to execute the outbound process with production integration. All those things we'll be covering in the goods issue section. Then slowly we'll add the complexities to our processes. We'll activate yard management, do the same processes with the yard. We'll create custom delivery types and create work package for our resources based on their capacity. Okay, so the resources can execute the task based on, uh, we will create tasks depending on the layout requirement, resource requirement, we'll understand the constraint of the warehouse and how to uh, execute those activities. And then, as I told you, these intermediate steps, deconsolidation, quality, packing, staging, intermediate areas, how they are designed and implemented, we'll activate storage controls. Then uh, we'll talk about the internal processes like posting change, stock transfer, ad hoc, movements, replenishment, physical inventory. We'll also then take you through the advanced topics like MFS, how it talks to, you know, the, um, the PLC, Valid service kitting, cross docking, PPF, and labor management. How these advanced processes are done in, in uh, EWM. So this is this course content is uh, very close to SAP. Uh, you know we are ensured that we are covering all the topics from the certification course content. So we will also share you. Uh, so basically, what are the things that we are going to share you while in the course? Obviously, all the SAP books, and we also guide you for certification. For each unit, for example, this is our first unit. We'll be uh, every anything that is demonstrated. We'll be giving you the uh, stepwise word document and evaluation document to test question answers to test your uh, progress on that particular unit. And uh, at the end of uh, each unit, we will be you know uh, uh, giving you a assignment so that uh, you know you practice along with me. So all this uh, you know. Topics are well designed with, with their objectives and uh, you know what are we going to cover and exercises and at the end evaluations and all 
all the execution, everything, as I said, we'll be doing on theories, you know, so that we, while learning EWM, we'll also understand the theories and uh, and get used to S4 HANA because in future we are going to move to S4 HANA. Okay. So these are the eleven topics. For each of these eleven topics, you know, we'll have uh, similar, you know, documents. For example, uh, you know, the evaluation sheets or the PPTs shared with you so that you can work yourself. So whatever configurations we are going to do all our you know, whatever we have designed, we'll be sending you the configuration stepwise, the master data and how to test end to end the overall process. Yeah. All those documents we'll be sharing with you so that you know you don't have to go through the recordings all the time. Okay. So this is how the uh, course is going to be conducted. Uh, any questions on the course, uh, you know, course content or how we conduct our course? Uh, Rohan, Manu, yeah. yeah. So, so every time you, you explain through PPT or you will explain through system? Please, uh, before we go into the system, we have to uh, understand the theoretical part, you know, the background and uh, uh, why we are uh, what is the what is the process that we are going to test and what are the what is the background behind it so we are we are going to set up everything all these processes we are going to execute in system for a new warehouse that we are going to create from scratch we are not going to you know uh, it's not a theoretical session it's totally practical session ppd is there to help us the concepts if i'm talking about availability group i'll be using the drawing boards but there are some pre built uh, documents that we can uh, diagrams or concepts that we can refer PPT at times. So it's not okay. Got it. Practical. Got it. Thank you. Uh, and one more thing. So what about us? How to how we can get the hands on? So uh, what we okay. So you will be also given access to the same system. So what we uh -huh. uh, propose is while we are executing the processes, you guys uh, will be testing the processes with us. So today I create a warehouse expectation is end of the day. You will also create warehouse whatever processes I do in that week. You have to test all those processes yourself for your new warehouse. And there are apart from that there are additional uh, practices practice test I'll be giving you to for configuration and testing few more scenarios. So you have to you know continuously practice along with us. Okay, okay. So you are going to provide the server details for us. Yes, yes. You will be given the same server which I'll be using. And you have to practice. So that we can do practice at our home also. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, any limitation, Robin? Uh, any any duration? It's like to give the access. Any any limitation to give the access? I mean, uh, it, I think you can check with your uh, coordination team. So. Okay. I think there is two months or uh, two months access which is given or it, it depends you know let's uh, just speak to your coordination team uh, how much you need and they will guide you mm. okay okay so and uh, what is the duration so duration is uh, 45 hours but you can say approximate we go up to 50 hours in you know, the batch so it should be daily okay so what we suggest is you know you give us your suitable time so basically you know um, each uh, we have several batches going on so just let your coordination team know which time you are available we have weekday batches morning evening we have weekend batches so if you can let us know your suitable time we will uh, will guide you in which batch we can allocate you So just uh, the coordination team will speak to you or maybe after the session just let them know okay Rahul. rohan fine thank you okay all right um, so just uh, you know since you have some more time i'll execute a basic inbound process here so i'm just trying to look into a particular material that i can use here just 100 
and uh, of 17 okay so let us create a purchase order here this is for our existing batch so each batch we create a warehouse for this batch i'm just trying to execute a ewm inbound process so i'll first create a purchase order the same inbound process i'm going to show you how it can be done for a basic inbound okay so for example this is a pr25 i guess i hope So my plant is, let's say PL25. So inbound delivery is mandatory. So I'll just mark the confirmation control key here. This is a purchase order that is created. For this purchase order, I am, I'll try to execute an inbound receipt and put away so that you are aware, you know, how these processes are done in an EWM system. So we, as I said, we always create a delivery you know, so I'm just creating a delivery here. So in this delivery, as soon as I create a delivery, it is go to e, going to EWM. This delivery notification, we get it from our vendors, what material they are sending us in what quantity. So this is a warehouse and I will share this delivery. So you can see, you know, in normal, if you have worked in deliveries before, they just get saved, but this delivery is now sent to EWM as well. I'll copy this delivery. And I'll show you this delivery in EWM. So this is the same instance. The only thing is you'll have to open a separate system if it is decentralized. Okay. Same transaction, everything is same. It's not coming up. Let me check. Slash so or sent you to here is any master data issue here or the system is slow. Just let me somebody is practicing in the system, so let me you know um inactive the data which he's using I think let me deactivate this. I'm just uh, deleting the master data so that we are able to test our process here. Okay, good. So we got this delivery now. Um, map to EWM. Okay, so this is a delivery. It has moved to EWM. So same delivery has now moved to EWM. We will now try to receive it. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, we can receive it on the RF scan guns. So there is a test transaction using which we can execute this process. Inbound with receiving of handling units, receiving by delivery. Okay, so this is how you know a uh, operator will use the scan guns to receive it on the RF scan uh, RF devices. So here you can see there are no handling units here. I can you know create handling units here. 
while I am uh, receiving on the scan gun itself. So I need to S4, okay, PJL00. I hope it works. Let me enter some other private. Oh my God, strange, a lot of number range issues. Okay, finally, I got my handling unit created here. So this is a palette into which I have packed this product and I will do a good receipt. So here you can see through RF, this device, this scan gun, the whereas operator is going to do the good receipt. So that good receipt will flow in EWM here you can see the good receipt is done and you can also see the good receipt will then go and reflect in our deliveries as well. See good receipt is posted our material document got created. So the whole receiving process has changed now it is done through warehouse management. So the same moment material document is now created through EWM. Okay, so this is 101 goods movement type. Accounting documents, everything is clear. So Rohan, you did not do put away to you something you have shown right in, uh, yes. in one So good process. receipt is done. Uh, I huh? have to do the put away. So now on good receipt. Uh, so huh? where is our handling unit? Let us see where is our handling unit. We have to put it away in a bin, right? So okay. You can see the stock in the warehouse where it is. It's in the area where I have received it. Now I have to take it into a final bin. So, so but I have received my stock. So I should tell system to that inventory has been received. So where it is received, it's still it's in the outside of warehouse in the GR area. I'll put it away into the bin. I'll just go from here and create a task to move it into a bin. This task will be automated. Just uh, I think we haven't reached a stage for this warehouse where we have configured the strategies. So I'll just manually push it into some bin. Let me find a bin here. So warehouse order got created. So normally this would get created automatically. And the operator who is supposed to receive it is now going to move it. So he's going to move it. He'll again go to the scan gun, do a put away, scan the HU or scan the warehouse order, and execute the movement in system. Scan the pallet. And scan the bin where he's supposed to move it. So this movement will complete your put away of your palette, and you can just do a refresh to see the bin location has changed. Now it has gone into 8001 storage type. Okay, so if you see on our layout, each product is designed to go to a particular area. So this is that area 8001 where I've placed it now. Okay, so, so let's look at our status in the delivery. So ERP delivery got completed. ERP doesn't matter to ERP where, which bin you're storing and as far as it is in the warehouse, the receipt is done, they are good. Here you can see the unloading, put away, good receipt, all has been completed and our delivery has been processed. So this is a basic EWM process that we did. Similarly, you know, we will configure a complex process and execute our activities in EWM. Okay. So, um, so yeah. any questions from anyone? This is what all I wanted to give you a quick uh, overview on the warehouse management. Uh, and um, we just discussed three things. What is EWM? 
we talked about the course, how this conductor the different topics and we went through a very high level one basic scenario in sap wm any questions guys from anyone related to any of the things that we've covered today uh, hi rahul yes uh, second uh, yeah uh, what is the stock? Uh, can you check it? So the handling unit is in this bin. If you if you see what is there in that handling unit, you click on physical stock. You will see this is the bin where I did put away. That piece is stored in that bin. Okay, that is also reflect reflect in the MMB as well. Or? Yes, yes, MMB also it's going to reflect. It will reflect in MMB as soon as I did a good receipt, you know, uh, in okay. EWM. Put away it doesn't reflect here. Okay. So you can see the stock. Okay, okay. So where we'll get the, how many stocks I'm having in the bin? That all you can get it in Veros monitor. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from anyone else? Um, Uh, hi, Rohan. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rohan, actually, like in uh, EWM, so uh, what are the, apart from the standards, what are the enhancements required in the, from the customer side? There are many enhancements. Uh, uh, explaining you RF changes are there. This is monitor. Okay. They want to bring some custom object over here, custom report or uh, they want to you know create a z transaction for something business specific so it depends on business to be there are a lot, lot of possible announcements okay now because you see like in mmv we are doing a lot of enhancements so probably in ew is vast so i hope to, apart from the standard uh, you are getting like are doing many enhancements yes yes right so yeah so so that part uh, we will cover in the in the session yeah, yeah we will be discussing and what are the common announcements but obviously since mm -hmm. it's a test system we won't be able to do any announcements we don't have the developer keys as such uh, mm -hmm. but yeah we will be talking about what are the typical announcements in each of the areas definitely okay, okay thank you Okay. Okay then. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, it was nice interacting with you all. Um, if you still have any questions, you can drop us an email, and we'll get back to you. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you, Rohan. Okay. Uh, Rohan, can I share that uh, any mail ID? How to contact? Uh... So. Uh, you can drop a mail to Suresh, he'll connect to us. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you, Rohan. Thanks. It's now. Bye. <laughs> Bye.